Watch Your Chronicles is a Souls-like with charming graphics, but probably one of the hardest games I have ever played in my life. You play as an unnamed hero who spawns an altar with only a great sword, a bow and some armor. You have one button for normal attacks and you have another button for your secondary attack, which requires focus. You are able to charge up both attacks if you would like to, but you will be more vulnerable of course. You also have a jump, dodge, block and drinking a health potion button. Along the way you will find better equipment like special rings, new or enchanted weapons and magic spells. All of these can be upgraded in this area called Haven, with these red gems you will find during your adventure. Believe me, you are going to teleport a lot to Haven to make yourself stronger, because you are going to need it. When you defeat enemies or bosses you will get Umbra. Umbra is the currency in this game. With Umbra you can upgrade your skill tree and you can buy or upgrade your weapons as well. I mainly leveled my dexterity as much as I could, because I needed the stamina to survive all these crazy enemies. But if you go for a different class, you could also upgrade focus more often for example. Many weapons require a specific amount of everything to unlock, so this could also be your guideline. But trust me, you need stamina to kill some enemies or these bosses that are on steroids. Your mission in this game is to defeat 4 Watchers, each located in different areas. It doesn't matter how much health you have, because one slip up and you will get destroyed by the bosses. Especially these 4 Watchers. The reason why I encourage you to spend your Umbra on dexterity as much as you can, is because you need stamina to dodge roll or block, and parry the attacks if you time it correctly. Without stamina, you are probably going to die. This also counts for moments where you are just fighting mobs and trying to find the next checkpoint. Sometimes I just gave up fighting and rolled my way to the closest checkpoint, just so I could spend my Umbra without losing it. When you die, you will lose all your Umbra, and you can get it back if you manage to return to the same spot without dying again. Easier said than done, because this game is brutal. If the enemies or boss fights don't kill you, maybe the unfair level design will. There are areas in this game where you die instantly when you fall off a platform. You only have one jump and a dodge roll that gives you just enough height to grab the edge of another platform. But that's not all. On some of these other platforms there is a mob waiting for you to hit you off the platform with a sledgehammer or a different ridiculous weapon. This is just cruel game design. Sometimes I just couldn't do anything but just laugh when these unfair deaths happened to me. I lost 3 levels worth of Umbra, but I never gave up. It can be frustrating as hell, and sometimes you are just outnumbered and the only thing you can do is run like a chicken to safety. Some boss fights were so challenging and unforgiving, they took me at least 50 tries to defeat them. Sometimes it just felt like torture, but I liked the challenge at the same time. It felt good being able to beat these bosses, and eventually to beat this game. I didn't enjoy the level design at all though. Every area feels the same, but with a different skin and different mobs. Like the gameplay is pretty repetitive, but all these different items, weapons, armor, rings and spells give you the freedom to experiment and to figure out which build suits you the best. I went for a brawly build with a lot of critical damage the first time, and the second time I went for a necromancer build, so I had to change up my playstyle. All these different build opportunities give this game a lot of replay value, and I appreciate that. So it doesn't really matter that the combat on its own is pretty generic. For me it's more about the freedom to build your character how you would like to and how you are going to overcome these challenges eventually. There's a lot of variation in the enemy and boss design. Some earlier bosses return back later as default enemies. Luckily they have a smaller health bar this time, 
but just their presence in the horde of mobs can be enough for you to just avoid them in general. There are also optional boss fights that give you better gear or other items if you manage to defeat them. So this makes the game less linear as well and it invites you to explore the whole area. So in general Watcher Chronicles doesn't have great level design, sometimes it's even unfair in my opinion. But what it does have is a charming look, a crazy high difficulty that gives you a great feeling if you accomplish this challenge. I mean, the Steam achievements of this game are literally just focused on defeating bosses and eventually the two endings. So this tells you the main focus of the developer. And what it also has is a lot of different possible builds for you to try out in multiple playthroughs. It's crazy to me that only 3 people created this game that took me 15 hours to finish. I'm afraid this game is not for everyone though. The high difficulty and the punishing boss fights, especially the 4 watchers, can put you off. But if you would like to overcome these challenges and would like to be proud of yourself, then I highly recommend Watcher Chronicles. Give this charming but savage game a try if you are ready with some beating.